Hi everyone, my name is Robin Lewis and in this video I'm going to be having a go at steam bending. So the first thing I need is a steam box, that's where the wood goes into to get it up to temperature and to make that box I'm going to be using some of this pine. The reason I've put in so many screws along this length is as I fill this with steam this box is going to want to warp and twist like crazy. The problem with that is then the steam's going to escape and you're not going to be able to get the temperature that you want. You may be thinking plywood would have been the better option, and I think it would have, but I had this pine left over from another project, and I figured with enough screws, I'd be able to get away with it. I drilled some holes through the side of the box to slide some dowel rods through, and I could sit the piece of wood that I was bending on top of this, that way I'm getting steam to engulf it more evenly. I screwed the back panel in place, and then started working on the front panel this needed to open and close. I used some fairly cheap window seal as a gasket and then attached the front panel using a hinge and a clasp. The idea here is you want the seal to be as tight as possible so you have better control over the steam, but if it does leak a little bit, it's not the end of the world. Ultimately, you want the steam to flow through the box from one end to the other, so it doesn't need to be completely tight. However, if there's too many gaps, then it's not gonna be able to build up that warmth like you want it to. The next step is going to be to get steam into the box and you would normally use something like a proper steamer or steam unit. I don't have one of those but I do have a steam cleaner. So what I'm going to do is drill a hole roughly the size of this and then I should be able to slide this in and then that just holds in place as the steam is coming out. Then I drilled a few holes to allow the steam out. What you don't want is the box building up too much pressure and then that was it. Okay, so the steam box is ready to go. I've just got to add some steam and then we can get underway with the first and hopefully last test before getting onto the bending of the chair. <laughs> you can see here I changed where the steam enters the box. This was just to help it spread through a little more evenly. You also want to tilt your box up so that the steam rises up through the box and then all the excess water will run back down through one of those holes. This is where having a thermometer helps so much because you can see exactly when your box reaches the magic 100 degrees Celsius. It's amazing how as we're getting closer to that 100 mark, it's struggling. It's really struggling to get any hotter. 97. <laughs> Come on. While that's busy steaming, I apologize about the hiss, let me talk to you about the form that I'm going to be using. This is just a straight piece of timber with two um, half circles. So the idea is going to be to clamp it along this and then curve it around. All I'm doing in this test is making sure that I can curve this radius. In the meantime, we just peaked 100 on this, so it's dropped back down to 99. But just took a little bit of time, we're up to about 20 minutes now and this did get up to 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, here we go. Here we go. You want to be as quick as you can with this process because as soon as that wood leaves that high temperature, the lignin is going to start solidifying again. Okay, well, that didn't work. Okay, let's go to plan B. Let's see what I can do with this. Okay, that did not work. It's day two, I've done a lot of research last night and I think I may have found some answers to the problems I was having. This is the timber that I've been using up till now. This is Tasmanian oak, and according to a very good document, which I'll link to, this should be good for bending. So I'm not too worried about the wood that I'm using, but I think the thickness might be where I'm falling down. This is six mil thickness, which I would have thought would have easily bent, but re-watching a lot of the videos, I see people going down to four, even three millimeters, and then they have success. So that's the first thing I'm gonna to try today. I'm gonna to resource some of this down to around three or four millimeter and we'll try and bend that. Okay, we're up to 90 degrees. The new timber's going in. I'm 
going to try and be a little bit more precise with this one. So get it to a specific temperature, keep it in for a certain amount of time, that kind of thing. So that I know when I come to do the actual project that I want to do, I've figured out where that sweet spot is. While the wood's cooking, I've been making a new form as well. I suspect the old form that I had might have had a radius that was too tight. So I'm going to try going a bit bigger and then work my way down to that. So this is a fairly larger radius and then I'll be able to clamp the, the piece of wood on either side of this. Something that really started to make sense with this test is the amount of pressure that you need to apply to get the wood to bend. It's not too quick, it's not too slow, but you sort of start to figure this out around this point. Time. Definitely went further than last time. So I do feel like I am making some progress. I've had it running now for another half an hour, so I'm going to pull it out in a couple minutes and have another go. So I'm going to try and be a bit quicker with this one. Not happy. Oh, it's gonna go, it's gonna go, it's gonna go. <laughs> uh, I need more support around the outside. That's what I need to do next. I'm starting to think that the combination of a wider radius and thinner strips is definitely working. But the next thing I'm gonna try is using a strap for the outside of the timber. The idea is, as the, the wood is bent around the form, this is going to support those, those fibers on the outside. So I'm just waiting for the box to heat up again, and then we'll give it another go. Okay, so. If you're wondering, this fabric came from a ratchet strap set. A better option would be to use some kind of flexible steel, but I didn't have any of that. This is what I had on hand. Okay, there's still a small crack. I don't think I've done it perfectly, but along this top edge, it, look, it looks like it's held together. So I'm gonna leave this, let this cool down, see if it holds its shape. But either way, progress is definitely being made. It's been about 12 hours. The lignin in this wood should hopefully have dried in this time. Uh, as you can see, I'm getting a bit of spring back, but it should be closer to its shape. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Got a bit of cracking over here. But that's it really. And that's holding its shape. The thing with it is though, even though now it's, it's sprung back, you can still push it back in and it's relatively flexible on that point. This is a win. I'm, I thought there was gonna be a lot more cracking in that. Good morning everybody, it is day three and this piece of timber has been sitting overnight submerged in water. So its moisture content is up to 28%. It's probably a bit too hard. You really want it between 20 and 25%, but I wanna see how this affects the result.
Well, that didn't make a huge amount of difference. I've still got another nice big crack right there. Um, I guess it's, hmm. I wonder if it's just gonna come down to time in the steamer. But that's cool, I think this crack is minimal enough that I'm happy to proceed because as long as one of my bends is correct on the actual project, then I would be happy because that'll be the outside one and that'll be covered. It's the next day, so this has been sitting in the form now for almost 24 hours. This is the longest I've kept it in the form for. The other one I brought out a lot sooner. It's interesting, I've left this one in the form for a lot longer and I'm getting a lot less spring back than this previous one. You can see there, it's a lot tighter. I've read that you're supposed to keep it in the form for at least 24 hours, and that's obviously why. It just reduces that amount of spring back. All right, I'm gonna leave this project here. I'm feeling pretty confident now that I should be able to bend wood in the actual project, which will be in a later video. I've gone from this, which was probably a bit more breaking than bending, to this final bend over here, which I'm, I'm really happy with. A little bit of sanding, and I reckon that would be good to go. So just a couple of things, if you are thinking about doing this to yourself, just a couple of points that um, I've figured out along the way that you might be interested in. The first one is that the one hour per inch of thickness rule, definitely a guideline. Um, I was steaming this for an hour and that got me to where I wanted. And this is obviously a lot less than one inch of thickness. This is four mil but that hour worked with this particular species of wood. So when they talk about an hour of, of steaming per, per inch of thickness, I think it's really dependent on the wood, but because you're new and you're not sure how to do that, you've got no real idea of what is and isn't going to work. So my advice, just steam anything around this thickness for an hour and start with that as a baseline. And then from there, you can either bring it back or do it longer. The other thing is that I would highly, highly recommend you go for a wood that is easily and readily available. This Tasmanian Oak or Vic Ash is, uh, I can buy this from my local big box store. So I've always got a supply of it and you are going to make multiple mistakes. You are going to end up with a pile of breaks. So if you have a type of wood that you can get on demand and it's always the same type of wood, that's gonna work so much better for those initial stages. Instead of going for your exotic, one of a kind piece of uh, timber that you wanna bend and you're just gonna break it. All right, well, that was a, well, it, was, it was a journey. <laughs> um, I'm gonna be using what I learned here to make a chair, a bent lamination chair, and that'll be coming up in a future video. But I hope you got something out of this. Um, if you haven't done bent lamination before, this is what you can expect. Um, so I hope you've got a little bit of information out of it. My name is Robin Lewis. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. And if you want to keep up to date with this type of content, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe and hit that bell icon. All right, everyone, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.